Hello friends, welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to see how to configure web servers with auto scaling behind the application load balancer and with Palo Alto firewall. Let's see the architecture first. In this lab, we are going to configure two VPCs. In first VPC, we'll configure public subnets for auto scaling in the application load balancer. So in second VPC, we'll configure two subnets. In this VPC, second VPC, we'll configure uh, gateway load balancer in private subnet. Then we'll configure respective gateway load balancer endpoint in this first VPC's subnet. Here we'll take Palo Alto firewall. These are the things mainly we are going to configure in this tab. Let's see incoming traffic flow now. First it will hit internet gateway, then it will go to gateway load balancer endpoint, then load balancer, then it will go to Palo Alto firewall. Here we'll configure the rules to allow this traffic. So it will inspect by firewall and it will go back to gateway load balancer endpoint. Then it will go to application load balancer and it will create a session one of this server. Let's see response traffic flow from web servers now. So first server will re respond to here and it will come back to gateway load balancer endpoint. Then it will go to gateway load balancer, then Palo Alto firewall. Once we allow this traffic here with the security rules, it will come back to gateway load balancer endpoint and it will go to internet. This is overall traffic flow. As this is lab and uh, we are going to access this Palo Alto firewall from internet. So just I would like to add one more subnet here to access this Palo Alto firewall and we'll add one more internet gateway on this second VPC as well. This is just to access Palo Alto firewall from internet. Let's see the steps now. First we'll configure VPCs and internet gateways, then subnet configuration and uh, application load balancer. Then configure gateway load balancer, gateway load balancer endpoint, Palo Alto firewall, and associate Palo Alto firewall and configure these security rules to allow this traffic. Then we'll modify the rules and we'll check this whether it is working as expected or not. So in this lab, actually I'm not going to show you this application load balancer stuff because in the earlier video we already done it. So if you would like to check this, how to configure application load balancer along with the auto scaling. You can check that video so I can keep that link in description as well as on this video. So you can go through that and you can understand how to configure application load balancer along with auto scaling group. So let's jump into our AWS console now. Okay, this is our AWS console now. Let's see whatever I configured as of now. In VPCs, I have configured one VPC and let's go to this subnets. In subnets, I have configured three subnets. These two are public subnets for uh, ALB, application load balancer, as well as auto scaling group. And this is for gateway load balancer endpoint. So let's go to EC2. This is the application load balancer. This is relevant uh, ASG. And you can see by using this application load balancer, we can uh, access this. As we did last time, we are able to access two servers. Here, Here you can observe it is changing, right? So it is sharing the traffic and we are able to access this link from internet. Let's configure second VPC now. VPC and VPC2 it is. Let's take a different CI here. Create VPC. Okay.
got created. Let's go back here and create submits. Let me see two. And this is for management submit for firewall access. And uh, this can be in any region. Let me take 10.10.10.20.0.0 10 .10 10 slash 24 for that. Create submit. Let me create one more from BPC2, and this is for gateway load balancer endpoint. Sorry, gateway load balancer. Gateway load balancer. Let's create one more subnet for Palo Alto Firewall. So in second VPC also, we have configured three subnets. So total we have six subnets here in VPC 2, 3 and VPC 1 also 3. So this is for Palo Alto Firewall and this is for Gateway Load Balancer. This is for Palo Alto Firewall Management Interface. So let's create Palo Alto Firewall now. Click on Instances, Launch Instance, PA Firewall. Palo Alto, search in marketplace, choosing bundle 2 from here, click on continue, okay, so let it be, so don't want to change anything here. Instance type is OK. And I would like to use existing Palo Alto key, key pair, SSH key pair. So you can create the new one also if required, but it is OK. So already I have this key. Just edit network settings, VPC2. And here it will be swapped to data interface later. So I'm creating directly. Uh, which should be in data interface like which should be it should be in subnet palo alto so i'm keeping it as is and for a data subnet with data interface we no need of any public ip address so i'm keeping it as is and uh, let me allow the relevant traffic so this, this traffic basically come from gateway load balancer so for health check purpose we need this and uh, this is not required let me remove this and let me add the HTTP as well for health check purpose. HTTP anywhere. And let me add one more important port that is UDP 6081 for Genu protocol. And uh, just let me change this name as PA data NSG to security group okay so this is fine and just let me go to this advanced details and let's add this SAP management interface from here and press out here let's click on launch instance so it is okay so let me select this as anywhere for now and if you would like to see more uh, details on this management interface and how we are doing i have another video also on palo alto firewall you can go through that so that you can get more clarity how we have to configure this palo alto firewall in aws 
Okay, just I'm clicking on launch instance. See the status now. Let's wait for a couple of minutes. I will pause the video and resume once it is available. So firewall is in initializing stage now. So meanwhile, let's create this management interface for this. For that one, first I will create network security group to allow this management traffic as well as one public IP. So let me create network security group now for this management traffic. Hello, Alto Management NSG, and just this is to allow HTTP, HTTPS, ICMP, also SSH. Okay, and uh, let me choose this VPC as two and add rules. ICMP from anywhere and SSH from anywhere, HTTP, this is also from anywhere and HTTPS because we would like to access this device from internet. So just I'm giving this source IP address as anywhere and um, these are the protocols we are going to allow for this management interface okay so and outbound is any so just let me add the tag as name and tag this is palo alto management nsg the security group okay just click on create security group it will create so then let's go to this network interface and create network interface this is for palo alto mng interface just select the subnet of this management interface management subnet which we have created dedicated for this that's it and let's select the security group palo alto management Select this one, create network interface. So, this is the one which we have created just now. Let me give the name as Palo Alto Management Interface. Okay, save. And let's see here we don't see any public IP address assigned. So let's assign the public IP address first and uh, then we'll attach this management interface to our Palo Alto firewall. So let's click on this elastic IPs location IPv4. Just click on allocate address and let's attach this to associate this elastic IP address to interface Let's refresh it and select our Palo Alto management interface private IP address is relevant to this just associate it oh we're getting some error elastic IP address could not be associated Okay, so it is giving error for internet gateway. Let's create quickly create network internet gateway for VPC2. Click on internet gateway, create internet gateway. This is IGW internet gateway for VPC2. We can create and attach this VPC2 to VPC2 here and attach internet gateway 
Then let's go back to this elastic IP address. Elastic IPs and attach this IP associate with interface. Choose this one, select this one, and associate. Perfect. Now it is associated with this interface. Let's go back to this interfaces and see. EC2 interfaces and Palo Alto management interface. Here you can see public IP address is assigned now. So let's attach this interface to our Palo Alto firewall. Attach and choose instance name. This is the one we can attach now. So let's go to this instance status. Once it is up, we should be able to reach this firewall from internet let's check this we go guys this is the public IP address of this VM so let me open new browser and see let's see still it is not available right so because we have to modify routing table for this one so let's go back to routing tables. These are the two routing tables for VPCs. Let's create separate routing table for this and I will attach to this management subnet. MNG. Root, root table RT, just like the VPC, VPC2, create root table, and uh, just add the default root towards Internet Gateway. Internet Gateway, select this one, click the VPC2, save changes, then let's associate this VPC. This relevant subnet to this one management subnet and associate with it. So after modifying this routing table, let's see are we able to access this web page now? HTTPS IP address. Yes, it is loading. So I can see this web page now. Let me go back to this console, SSH, and browse that uh, SSH key first. And I will access this, and I will set this password, admin password, so that we can access this using GUI then. So SSH key, browse, and this is the one. Back here, session, is the IP address, we can open. UK guys, we are able to access this device using this one and uh, the name is admin. I can do admin. So now we are in firewall. Let me set this management password first. So I set this password guys by using this command set management. Uh, Config username admin and password this one. So once it is hundred percent committed, so then later we can use this credential to log into this Palo Alto GUI. Successful. Let me try this now. Just let me reload it before doing that. Admin. Okay, here we go guys, it is accepted. So let's see, once we, we log in into this GUI, we need to set health checks profile for this gateway load balancer. And also we have to create some security rules. So let's do that first. Okay, let's set this uh, for this 
interface let's say set this as a layer 3 IPv4 and DHCP client it is automatically create default route then we'll do one thing advanced management profile we need to create one profile to for monitoring purpose I'm using this and for health check this is for health check just click on ok click on ok let's quickly create Jones as well June man you can okay let's assign this interface to join one so that good which will write a table default one and the join is join one just click on okay yes so commit these changes So it is commit successful. Let's close this. Refresh this. When you can see this is up now. So we'll do one thing. Let's go back to our AWS console. Okay, let's create gateway load balancer now. Load balancers. Create gateway load balancer. Create. Gateway LB. IPv4 and the VPC it is VPC2 US S1 select this gateway load balancer submit here let's create target group we had to create this first instances gateway load it's a key target group this is for generic protocol this is nvpc2 only so let it be no need to change anything click on next okay so okay i can see one instance here let's click on this and uh, include as pending below and create target group target group is ready let me go back to this gateway load balancer and attach this target group here and okay like this seems good create load balancer view load balancer load balancer is provisioning now so meanwhile let's create this load balancer endpoint this is if you see endpoints and endpoint services. Let's click endpoint service, create endpoint, and uh, gateway load balancer endpoint service. So just select this as a gateway load balancer, and this is the one. Okay, Let's click on create. So service endpoint endpoint service is created now. We need to create endpoint now. So this service is created uh, successfully here. So let me go back to this endpoint. 
Okay, let's create a endpoint now. You can create endpoint. GWLB endpoint. Okay, and uh, click on other services. Here it is asking for service name. Okay, let me quickly open this duplicate. Endpoint service and copy this service name here. Copying this, going back to this endpoint. Let's see. Verify. So, name as verified. We are going to create this PPC1 here. Make sure. So, we have selected this one. Endpoint submit. In the PP4, create endpoint. So, endpoint is created now. So it is still a string as pending, so it is it will be available shortly. So let me pause the video. Once it is available, I will resume it. So this is for uh, endpoint is pending for acceptance. So I'm going to this endpoint services. I'm going there, endpoint connection. Here it is. We have to accept endpoint request. Click on accept. So endpoint is still showing pending, but uh, meanwhile we'll go back to this firewall and configure few steps to associate this endpoint with this uh, firewall. Okay, so let's jump into firewall console. It's so a firewall console, and we need to uh, execute few steps here. So first we have to check whether this VM series gateway load balancer plugin is enabled or not. If it is not enabled, we have to do that. So it's it. Let's cure this again. It is showing like false. So we have to enable this. Before doing that, just let go back to this here and we need to create sub interface. So let me create that first. Add sub interface. And this is for that one. Or 100. I'm just giving the tag as 100. None. Happy before. Let's be client. And uh, everything can be leave it as this. And this is the same. Same. Routing table and same join. No problem. So just I'm creating sub interface. Just clicking on commit. So it is done now. Let's go back to this console and uh, let's do this command and uh, let's enable this. And we can see the interface status by using this command. So you can see this this is management interface which we have swapped this and this is another interface. Anyway, let's enable this VM plugin first. Click to gateway load balancer. Request and here gun is and we can execute this command to check this. Let's see the status here. Yes, it is enabled. It is true. But yes, it is not uh, associated any endpoint. So let me associate this endpoint with it. Let me go back here. Copy this endpoint ID. This is the one. From here, let me paste over here. Let me make it as 100. 
Let's copy. Go there. Let's share. Hit enter. Let's see the status one more time. Yes, it is enabled for this interface and yeah, everything seems good now. So as of now, we have created all these devices like uh, auto scaling group and uh, application load balancer is available. Endpoint is created now. And uh, this is gateway load balancer, application Palo Alto firewall and uh, this management interface. These are all available now. So let's create routing tables and uh, modify the routing tables as per our requirement. Okay, so let's jump into our console again. Okay, so currently these are the routing tables available. This is for uh, VPC1 and this is for VPC2 and this is for management routing. This is related to Palo Alto subnet. Okay, so I'm going to create separate routing table for this internet gateway in vpc1 so igw vpc1 route this is routing table for igw it should be in vpc1 and just i'm creating routing table and uh, let me do this thing let me associate this internet gateway so internet gateway is not a subnet so we have to associate like this we have to click on edge association and edit edge association here we have to attach respective internet gateway this is the edge for the starting table save changes okay let's try to add routes here edit route edit and uh, actually we have to specify this relevant to alb subnets application or balance subnet in that in that one dot zero dot zero slash 16 slash 24 this is to forward towards gateway load balancer endpoint select this one save changes let me add one more route edit routes 10 dot 10 dot 1 dot 0 slash 24 these both are CID related to application load balancer. So I'm just diverting this traffic towards endpoint first. Save changes. Go back to routing table. So we have modified this routing table. And let's modify this default uh, route table of this application load balancer. So basically it falls under this default uh, routing table. So let me de-associate with them. So let me de-associate this application load balancer subnet from this default route table. So later we can associate these with other route tables. Edit association. And uh, So this can be associated only only gateway load balancer endpoint will forward the traffic to internet gateway. So I'm keeping in this route. So let me go back here and create a separate route table for ALB subnets root table VPC one create root table subnet association here we'll associate these two subnets save association and uh, here also we'll create default route towards gateway endpoint this is where basically response traffic we should go to gateway load balancer endpoint click on save changes 
So let me show you guys whatever I created as of now. So this is default VPC route table. This is we assigned only to endpoint subnet. So endpoint subnet we have route, these routes. So whatever come out from this endpoint, it will follow default route towards internet gateway. And let me come back to this internet gateway. This is from whenever route comes from internet gateway. So it will follow this route table. So for these two subnets, it will send the traffic to endpoint. This one and this one, it will send the traffic to endpoints. And this, this is for local traffic. And this is VPC2 default route, route table. And uh, this is management route table. We already saw this. This is management route table for in VPC2. It will forward to internet gateway for management uh, purpose to access this Palo Alto firewall. And this is application route table. It's in application route table also, we have forwarding default traffic to endpoint. So not directly to internet gateway, but endpoint. This is our application load balancer. I'm copying this DNS name and pasting over here. Let's see. You guys, we can see this. These are working fine now. And let me go back to the Palo Alto firewall and see what's going on here. As of now, I can see some blocks from internet. So from internet, it is trying to hit our destination. So here on firewall, we could see so much of traffic. So just I would like to restrict all these things. Let me create separate policy for health check so that I can restrict this traffic as well. I mean, we can see, we can allow only whatever we need. So let me do it quickly. So first, let me create one policy for health check. So that just, I would like to create one separate zone for a health check. This is for health check. And then let me create the to interface, click on OK. And uh, go to interfaces. I will modify this interface zone as health check zone. Click on OK. Yes. Let me create subdate policy for this. Health check sources shown. Health check shown. Destination is also same John towards that interface only and uh, we allow only HTTP HTTPS let me allow here there is HTTP and uh, HTTPS ports action allow So application any, click on OK. So this will allow this health check. Let me move on top of this rule before denying any any. Just let me commit so that we can confirm if it is up or not. Once it is up, let's check this. Okay, let's see now. So the relevant traffic is hitting here. So still we have access to Palo Alto Firewall. So that is working fine. So let's check this. So it is. Uh, let's come back here and create new rule. Let me remove this one. Let me allow specific rule for that one. Just let's collect this application load balancer private IPs. Go here. Network mapping. Here you can see. Here you can see the subnet details here, but let me go to interfaces to get the exact IP range or IP addresses.
see these are the two ELB IPs, load balancer IPs. Let me modify this as application load balancer IP1, application load balancer IP2, save changes, and yes, here we can get these details. These are the two IP addresses private IP addresses because public IP addresses will be converted as a private IP address at the NAT gateway itself. I mean internet gateway itself. So in in firewalls we can see only these private IP addresses. So let's create a allow rule from any way to these two IPs or from my IP to these two IPs, my public IPs to these two IPs. Let me note it down. Let me note down these two IP addresses. Bad. Take this one. And this one. So this is my public IP. Let me note it down so that I can allow only this traffic. Security policy and policy. Traffic source zone. This is also same zone. This from zone one. And source IP is IP. Give this IP. The destination zone is same because we're going to get this gateway load balance endpoint. And this destination will be these two IPs. Application HTTP just or web browsing. So is your category click on OK and let's just take all of the profits. Option hello. On top of this, we can write one more rule, or we can write this rule as well. Deny any any. So everything will be denied, and only this traffic will be allowed now. So let me click on commit. So it's done now. Let's see. Any hits out there in this rule? No hits as of now because I did not try any. Let's see this traffic. There are only health check related traffic. Let me try this thing. Yes, I'm able to access this still. So let me go back to the firewall. So let me filter with my IP address. So, so as my IP address. This is the thing, guys. You can see the sessions as well. If you go to monitor, row sessions, destination, you can close the sessions. Let's create new session for now. If you see currently health checks uh, is there but let me rebrowse this and it will create new session on firewall here we go guys this is the thing this is my ip from my ip i'm able to access this 1.96 this is actual good balancer ip address now it is working fine. So even we can restrict this traffic on firewall level. For example, let me disable this rule for some time and see if it is working fine or not. This is our rule. Okay, I mean, I will disable this. 
we can commit. We'll try to access this web service again and see if it is still working or not. Okay, it is successfully disabled now. We can get a window and let me try here. See, guys, it is not working. It is not loading. Enable. Commit. So it is enabled now. Let me try from here now. Just see, guys, it's working fine now. 